Good morning, dear friends. On this second Sunday of Advent, our focus is on peace, and our scripture reading is Isaiah 40, 1 through 11. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the grass of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers. The flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. God sends the messenger, the prophet, ahead to prepare the way, to cry out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, lift up the valleys, lower the hills, level the uneven and rough places. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. Jesus is coming. Pass it on. Jesus is coming again in this Advent season as we await with eager anticipation the celebration of his birth so very long ago. And he will come again in glory to redeem those who have put their faith and trust in him. Today's epistle reading reminds us that since we don't know the hour of his coming, we'd best be ready. We'd best be prepared. God calls us to be like the prophets of old, the messengers of the coming glory, like the wild man who munched on locusts and honey in the desert and told of the one who was coming, whose shoelaces he wasn't even fit to tie, like him, we're called to share the good news. What will we say? Who will listen to us? We're not worthy to speak of God's glory and grace. But God, he is abundantly worthy. The message for the Church of Christ at Green Bluff, let's call it First Green Bluffians 1-1, is God has work for you to do. A job that involves preparing people to receive the coming King, Jesus, the Christ. It's a job that none of you are qualified to do, but I will qualify those whom I called. That's God's message for us. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea, Micah, and Amos were not qualified except by God's grace. Neither was Moses or David, or even John the Baptist. Yet God empowered them by the Holy Spirit to deliver announcements and warnings and glad tidings of good news for all people. And God will do the same for us. People need comfort. Isaiah didn't know inherently how to comfort God's people. 
He didn't know what to say or when or where to say it or whether his efforts would be at all worthwhile considering the inconstancy and infidelity of his people. God had given the children of Israel everything they needed. He had given them a land flowing with milk and honey. He had protected them from those who would have killed them. He had brought their nation into existence, and he'd rescued them from slavery. Israel had repaid God with disobedience and rebellion. First, it was the golden calf. Then they complained that the manna from heaven wasn't good enough food for them. And then they refused to accept the promised land, complaining that conditions there were less than perfect. What shall I cry to them? Isaiah said. And God answered with words that sounded something like, Go tell it. Go tell it on the mountains, over the hills, and everywhere. Shout out glad tidings that I am coming with might and will feed my flock and gather my sheep to my breast. The Gospel of Mark begins with the reference to Isaiah 43, the voice in the wilderness crying out, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. The world needs a savior, but it also needs paviors. Pavior, P-A-V-I-O-R, was an old English word for one who paved a road, who made it straight, who made it easy to travel. God wants disciples and prophets who will be paviors like John the Baptist. The message of choice is repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Not a popular message, but a road-paving message of turning back to God. Although all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, it's never too late to get onto the right path. We prepare Christ's way when we become a crying voice. We make his path straight when, he bring his, when we bring his creative word to a world dying for the lack of it. We go before his face and make ready for him when we help to remove things that block his entrance into our hearts. We sing of letting every heart prepare him room for Jesus who emptied himself of all but love to leave his father's throne and come down to earth to die for our sins. We're called to have the same kind of self-emptying mind in us that was in Christ Jesus. Being empty doesn't sound like a good thing. I once heard of a four-year-old who went up to his father holding his belly and complaining, Daddy, Daddy, my tummy hurts. Your tummy's just empty, son. You just need to put something in it. We're getting ready to eat in a few minutes, and then you'll feel better. And his father was right. They ate dinner, and the little boy felt all better. After dinner, the pastor came over for a visit. And the little boy's father asked the pastor how he was. And the pastor said, well, I won't be staying very long. I've got a really bad headache. And the little boy said, your head is empty, pastor. You need to put something in it. Well, an empty head and an empty tummy are not desirable. But when it comes to our hearts and souls, we're called by God to empty ourselves of anger and jealousy and pride and hurt feelings and grudges and sadness and doubt and whatever else there is in us that keeps us from being of the same mind that was in the Christ. We're called to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, to seek to be holy and pure, just and merciful, even as God is holy and pure and just and merciful. When we trust in the righteousness of Christ and bring others to him, we are preparing the way for him to come and to save. Psalm 85 personifies righteousness and peace and depicts them kissing. 
if we strive to walk as children of the light and be like Jesus, we shall find the internal peace of God and shall strive to become instruments of God's peace. Our epistle reading today from 2 Peter 3 reminds us to live in holiness and godliness as we await the coming day of God. Verses 13 through 15 word it this way. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Comfort, comfort my people, says God. God could have had Isaiah prophesy doom and gloom at this point. But instead, God gave the prophet a message of hope and comfort. That's just the kind of God we serve and worship, a just God who is merciful and saves. This is the message of Advent, of John who cries out in the wilderness, Get the road ready for the Lord. And this is the message of Christmas, of the angels who announce peace on earth to everyone who pleases God. This is, in fact, the message of our faith, of our Savior who cried out on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In this season of Advent, God calls the church, that's you and me, to prepare the way for Christ's coming. We are reminded by both Isaiah and by John the Baptist that we are to be heralds of God's coming into our midst, that we are the ones who need to shout it from the mountaintops and the bluff that is green when it's not gold or snowy white. And we're supposed to cry in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. We'll be hearing glad tidings and we'll be bearing glad tidings to some enemies. We may be ridiculed by some who should be shouting with joy and hope, and we may meet the strongest resistance from those who should be supporting our efforts to reach out to those who need to receive the word concerning God's time of reconciliation and peace. That is the cost of discipleship the cost of faithfulness. The path is to be made straight and even so that in the journey of God toward us and of us toward God, we don't have to be looking down. The coming of Christ is good news and the message of repentance and forgiveness is good news. God is the greatest earth mover. He plans the road we work on and the Holy Spirit works in us and through us to level and fill and smooth that road. We don't have to be great speakers or scholars. We don't have to wear camel skins and eat locusts. Good thing. We just have to be willing to share the good news and to strive to live by that good news. Comfort. Don't condemn. Comfort my people. Let them know that through the Lord Jesus they can be forgiven. Speak tenderly to them of God's grace. Tell them to make a way in the wilderness for their God. God is patient with his people. God doesn't want anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance, says Second Peter 3, 9. The only problem is, that we don't know when the day of the Lord will come, so we need to make ourselves ready by leading lives of holiness and gratitude. And we need to help others become disciples of Christ too. In closing, let us pray together. Let us ask for God's guidance and strength for this calling. Gracious God, help us to meet you as you come to us Help us to prepare your way in our lives and to announce your coming in love to others. 
Hear, too, our prayer for the rough places in our lives and in the lives of those we love. Fill the valleys with your light. Level the uneven paths with your grace. And grant that your spirit might so move us and others that your saving presence might be visible to us all. On this second Sunday of Advent, let there be peace in our lives, in our church, and in our world. God, where we have sinned, move us to repentance that we may receive your forgiveness. When Christ comes again, may we be found by him to be holy and at peace. We ask all these things in the name of the one John pointed us to, Jesus the Christ. Amen.